this video, we're going to show you how to make this beautiful dimensional machine embroidered wreath. The pattern comes with a really fun design for quilting the border and the background. It fits in a 6x10 hoop, so it looks larger than that, but it will work. And I think this video will show you how that's done. This is just fun, and the pattern's available as a download. And I hope you enjoy this. We machine embroider four sections that will go together to make the whole ring. You hoop your background fabric that's spray adhesive to interfacing. And then it will only machine embroider this much of the wreath. And that's so that it will fit in this large hoop. And when I hooped it, I made sure there was a little extra fabric on this side. Then when I take it out of the hoop, I'm going to align it to the paper pattern. And I just mark on that background fabric the four corners with pencil. Then with my rotary cutter, I align that and cut a quarter of an inch beyond that for the seam allowances. And I finish tracing the wreath ring. I'm going to do four of these, so two together, two together, and then sew all four together, making sure that this very center seam is exactly matched. Now I've got my four sections together. I've matched the center exact. I've, I've matched the ring around so it makes a complete circle. Then I've added my border and I've sandwiched it with batting and backing. I've kept my backing a little bit wider so that I'll be able to hoop it for quilting the border. Now to be a little more successful, I spray mounted the back, the batting, and the border so that as it's being hooped and moved around, I, I will get no wrinkles or puffs in the back. I get a better result that way. Now. It comes with this beautiful pattern of butterflies and swirls for the border and it also comes with the same for the center but it's hooped twice so it has to quilt around these beautiful sprigs so it's hooped here and then it's hooped here and each time you want to align the markings uh, with the stem. So I give you little red markings where the stem goes and if those are aligned then it won't be twisted or turned and it will match perfectly. I get all the quilting done before I add any of the dimension and I'm also going to add my stem. So it's bias strip and this is batik so it doesn't have a wrong side but you're going to fold it wrong sides together if it does so that the raw edges are together and then you're going to align it perfectly just make it absolutely on the inside the raw edges are on the line and sew it exactly uh, a quarter of an inch or if you want it a wider stem make it smaller than a quarter of an inch but make it consistent so that the stem will be consistent with once that's stitched then you're going to fold this the fold back over the raw edges and blind stitch that fold to the quilt top. Then we'll begin adding our dimensional pieces. I've hooped my large hoop with two layers of water soluble interfacing and I've called up my pattern. There's two flowers in this large hoop and I'm going to have it do the first stage of an applique stitch which is a single stitch on both flowers. I've got um, colors that match the flower in both the bobbin and the main thread. And that's important because it'll be dimensional. You can see both sides. Then I've made my sandwich for the flower, which is the fabric for the flower. Put wrong sides together with thin polyester bonded batting and I spray adhesive it together so it would hold. And I will know where the flowers are because they're the single stitch will be on here, so it'll be placed. Then I'll make sure this sandwich covers both flowers, and then I'll single stitch again and trim around that, and I'll show you what that looks like. Now it's done this single stitch, 
again and I'm going to cut as close as I can to the little stitches without compromising the stitches. I'll bring it back, put it back in the machine and do a zigzag and the satin around each flower. Now it's finished the satin stitch and it's beautiful and it also sews a circle around the middle of the single stitch. I'm going to cut as much of this interfacing as I can away, soak it and sew. I'm just going to have the uh, freestanding flower and I cut out the center part leaving the stitches. I didn't cut into those stitches that will hold all those edges together. Then I, with the double thread, I go around and hand baste. I do a little stitch, two stitches on each petal so that they're uniform. And then when I pull it together, I'm going to just pull it carefully so I don't break that thread. And as tight as I can, then I'm going to go with my stitches back and forth to secure it until I have a really secure little flower. And then I'm going to put a pearl in the middle. And that's how we do our flower. I've hooped my large hoop with two layers of water soluble interfacing. You can use one layer. I just find sometimes it tears when I'm trying to trim around the leaves. So I just put two in, it's not very expensive. Then I've single stitched each leaf in the pattern. And that's the first stage of the applique stitch. Then I've made my sandwich, which is the leaf fabric, wrong sides together with thin polyester bonnet batting in between. And I spray adhesive that. And I put my sandwich over all of those leaves so that they're all covered. Then I'll single stitch again and trim away the extra fabric. Now I've trimmed around each of the leaves and I'll put it back in my machine and do the zigzag and the satin stitch, which are the two other steps for applique. It's finished doing its satin stitch. I'll trim away as much of the water soluble interfacing as I can, soak it, and it will be great. It'll look great on both sides. Then when I apply it to the quilt top, I'll stitch right down the middle to divide it like a stem, and it will be beautiful. It's looking so pretty. We've sewn each little leaf on. And the pattern comes with the diagram showing the angles of these leaves. We put seed beads on each of the branches of the sprig. And then we're starting to put our berries on. We're almost done. And it's just a round piece of fabric that you hand baste with double thread around the outside. And then you stuff it as absolutely full as you can of batting it tight and then go around and around until you close that opening and then you're going to put it face open side down and then kind of push it down a little bit and then uh, hand blind stitch where the fabric meets the quilt top this is just going to look so beautiful then we've put buttons in our on our flowers and we're going to arrange them so that the colors are across from each other and the button colors are across from each other and then we're going to just uh, hand blind stitch them on way underneath and then bind it and we'll show you when it's finished. Now our quilt is complete and it turns out beautiful. I think you'll have fun with this as you've seen in the video really how easy it is. You don't need the big jumbo hoops since it will just hoop a small section that you trace the rest of the block and finish it. We will have a Christmas quilt that will be spectacular and a fall quilt. Be sure to stay tuned for those that are coming. Come to our website and subscribe. I, I think you'll have fun with this. Thanks for watching.